All right, we are live. I'm here with 8% Nation, and I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing the insurance soup gang man, Michael McCormick, Taylor Dobby. What is up, fellas? What's going on, man? So good. Thanks for having us on. You got it. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Seriously, I've been following, as I'm sure thousands of other insurance agents have as well, the insurance soup for half, half a decade at least. And I'm telling you what, what you guys are doing is incredible. It's amazing. These guys are, they bring, they bring as much value. And I mean this as much value to the insurance industry as anyone else on planet earth. Gentlemen, welcome on. Oh man. Now, now I got some big, now I got some big expectations to live up to. Jeez. <laughs> no doubt that they have a, they have a Facebook group called insurance soup that if you are not a part of, I'm telling you what, uh, you need to go to request to be in the insurance soup group. Uh, they they were just shy, and they'll break it today. They say twenty two thousand insurance agents in the insurance soup group. They are all about bringing value to the insurance industry. Michael McCormick is up in Stony Brook, New York, and Taylor Dobby is about twenty five miles south of Dallas, down in Texas. Uh, super good dudes. For those that don't know, they are keynote speakers at this year's 8% Nation Insurance Wealth Conference, which, gentlemen, is in 22 days, 12 hours, 10 minutes, and 45 seconds from now. Which means we probably need to start working on a presentation of some kind. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, super excited, man. Super excited. You've put together, uh, I think, it's going to be by far the greatest conference for the industry that they've ever seen. Wow. Uh, so super excited. Uh, you know, same, same. We've been following you and your work, uh, you know, what you've been doing for a while as well. And it, it's always funny, you know, when we talk to someone on the social media world that we, we haven't actually met in person, how long we stalk each other before a relationship actually comes about. So it's, it's, it's I funny. remember. I remember the very first time that uh, that you popped up. I was uh, I was watching a YouTube video, and uh, it wasn't even anything insurance related or anything like that. You know, you used your uh, your your Jedi Ninja skills, and all of a sudden, I got I got you in front of me with uh, I don't remember who you were who you were speaking with, but you had your uh, you, you know you had your whole studio set up and uh, you know looking sharp like you guys always do. And I just said to myself, "Who is this?" And how soon before we're either friends or competing with one another? No doubt. So uh, ex excited that it went down the road that it went down, and uh, you know here here we are, and uh, Nashville is going to be uh, a hell of a time. No yeah. doubt. Thank you so much for the kind words. Nashville, Tennessee, Nissan Stadium. This event is, like I said, October twenty sixth and twenty seventh, not too far away. All right. So Michael and Taylor, for whoever would like to start, I'd love to hear your guys's. A uh, quick background and story about each of you, how you got in the industry, and also after after we introduce the two of you, also how soup has became a giant, gigantic bowl of soup at this point. Sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go first. Um, I got out of the military in 2012. Um, I was medically discharged with some back issues. While I was in the Air Force, I worked on aircraft. Um, so I got out, started working on corporate jets in North Dallas. Uh, worked on Mark Cubans, Ross Perot Jr. Uh, you know, a lot of the very successful men in Dallas, you know, got, got to work on their toys. I uh, got to a point to where I physically couldn't get out of bed anymore. And my wife was at the time taking over her uncle's farmer's agency. Uh, so I started going up there, hanging out, started to really enjoy, you know, just helping. Uh, went and got licensed and then became a farmer's agent myself. Uh, we took over her uncle's agency, but at the same time, I started my own. His agency was up and running for 35 years. So it really threw me right into the middle of it, you know, not only on the sales, but the service, uh, servicing side as well. Uh, a lot of agents, when they come into the industry, that servicing kind of slowly starts to pick up as they grow their book. But, you know, I was thrown right into the middle of it. Um, with the agency being, you know, an older agency, things were still done an older way. Uh, so it didn't take me long to realize, you know, in order to grow the agency, you know, we had to start, you know, marketing like it was, you know, year 2015, 2016, instead of like 1990. Uh, so that's kind of how Mike and I actually met, um, was on a, a social media marketing group. And 
started really diving in and, and that was the beginning of our journey down this you know this rabbit hole of marketing and it was in june 2015 we started creative concepts which is our social media marketing course um, then december of 2015 we started insurance suit the, the facebook group um, i'll let mike go into a little bit more about you know how we started and how it's got to this point though nice thank you taylor and thank you for your service buddy that's awesome appreciate it yeah so uh you know my story as far as uh, how i got into insurance and, and how we got to where we are today uh when i first got out of college i was in the mortgage industry the mortgage industry was at that point pretty much like the wild wild west it was uh it was hot it was fast it was ridiculously good money and uh it was a lot of fun especially for a, a young guy just getting out of college you know 23 24 years old making six figures plus doing uh doing something that you're having a lot of fun with it was uh it was it was all great and then uh 2007 ish started uh you know creep up and the writing started to show up on the walls as to what was going on in the industry and uh my my girlfriend now wife was kind of in my ear about how uh you know she was nervous about my being in, in an industry that looked like it was going to be crumbling and falling apart in the whole nine and uh i wound up playing it small and doing something that i generally don't do uh in my career all that often and uh, I, I started playing very very conservatively and I moved into the retail banks and I started off as a branch manager for JP Morgan Chase and part of being a uh, branch manager for Chase uh, requires you to have your life health 6 and 63 uh, you know you aid with some of the retirement planning all that kind of stuff and uh, you know after doing that for a couple of years I got recruited into a brand new private banking program in Citibank for their affluent clients. And uh, I was doing some retirement planning and some, uh, you know, some stuff in, in, the, uh, in, in the wealth world uh, for a couple of years, but I was really, really unhappy. Uh, I didn't like what I was doing. I wasn't having fun with it. And uh, my boss at the time, even though I was, uh, I was doing phenomenally, was just always just right on top of me. And uh, it, it got me to the point where I just said to myself, you know what, I don't, I don't want a boss. I don't need a boss. And I'm generally more productive and uh, and successful and happy when I don't have anyone to answer to. And I'm just allowed to kind of, you know, follow my own create creativity. And so I started shopping myself around a little bit and I was getting recruited by pretty much every life uh, life insurance company under the sun, every, uh, every PNC company under the sun. But most of them were looking to bring me on as a, uh, as a, as a soldier. And I've always kind of viewed myself as a general. I wasn't looking to get into the trenches. If I was going to, do something of substance within the industry it was going to be at an ownership level, and and finally I got the uh, I got a knock on the door, not literally, but uh, you know, my email from uh, from State Farm, and I went down that uh, I went down that path, and after uh, after presenting my business plan a number of times, I finally got the uh, I finally got the agency. I opened up Scratch here on the island, and part of my business plan was to you know, pretty much make it rain homeowners insurance because I've got an army of loan officers behind my back from my previous life when I was in mortgages. And uh, long story short, they love my business plan. But then on the second day after I opened, I got a phone call from my sales leader letting me know that here on Long Island, uh, the most amount of homes per month a new agent's allowed to write is four because they're looking to uh, take a little bit of a break from, uh, you know, from gaining in market share uh, on the heels of, Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, they take a they took a pretty bad beating. Wow. What's that? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know uh, the 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 way I always put it is I felt like I opened up a Dunkin' Donuts and uh, on the second day after after opening up that Dunkin' Donuts they were like oh by the way you can't sell coffee. So I, I kind of felt like I uh, I had I had my uh, you know the 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 rug pulled out from under me if you will. And I stuck with it for uh, for two years. I put together a little bit over a two million dollar book. But the way that uh, the way that State Farm has got things set up, if you are not producing at a high level with life insurance, uh, you're struggling to really maximize your commissions and maximize your bonus. And all the life insurance that I was producing was transactional. I wasn't really putting people in uh, policies that they needed for true protection. I was doing it to you know offer additional discounts and. Uh, you know, not having a book of homeowners, trying to convince people that are 23, 24 years old, living in an apartment or living in their mom's basement or, you know, someone in their 40s that, you know, kind of failed to launch, uh, you know, convincing them they need life insurance. 
you know, I, I, I did my numbers, but ultimately what wound up happening is as those people would shop their, uh, their auto insurance, the, the life insurance would fall off. And if your life insurance didn't stick on the books for at least two years, they began to penalize your production for the year that you're in. And I started losing policies because quite frankly, the stuff that I was doing was all transactional. It wasn't legitimate use based. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, we butt heads on on that, and they weren't thrilled with uh, with some of the marketing that I was doing, and we were butting heads a little bit on that because they like to have a lot of control over things, and uh, and ultimately I just kind of got to a point where I had to say to myself, all right, am I going to continue to struggle to run a business as a business owner like I'm like I've convinced myself that I am, but State Farm's treating me like I'm not, uh, or do I uh, or do I make a switch? And ultimately, I made a switch. I opened up independent. And uh, within a couple of months of being independent, everything that we were doing on the soup side, the CAC side, and a couple other projects that we had going were booming at such a level where I kind of had to make a decision. And uh, I had to decide, do I want to move into more of a consultancy role in this industry or continue to, uh, to grind it out as an owner? And I love the marketing side, man. It's so much fun. Uh, I love social media. Probably, I, I probably love social media a little bit too much. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you I definitely do, even though uh, even though she likes the money that we make, and uh, and and here we are today. So, yeah, that's awesome, buddy. Thank you for sharing your story too. That's really cool. Well, I can tell you what, um, your personality really comes through on social. So it's uh, just hilarious. This just the interaction and the stuff I see now because because Facebook friends and following in the group and all that. Y'all do some really cool stuff. Very unique, you know. Like you kind of talked about, you guys naturally just think outside the box extremely creative um what, what, what's kind of what's kind of the differences real quick between like what taylor's great at and what michael's great at and why this has been such a great partnership well i, I can answer that mike is the brain behind you know a lot of the marketing that we do um, a lot of the strategies he he's he's the the wizard behind the scenes um you know i, I learned from mike every time we get on and we put you know, together a new marketing campaign, I'm, I'm taking notes. Um, and that's, we, we work really well together. One, we keep each other in check. Uh, you know, there, there's days to where we both have to be like, all right, man, like it's time to get stuff done. You know, we need to pick up and improve here, here, and here. Like, this is what you need to do. This is what I need to do. Uh, but yeah, Mike's the, I consider the wizard behind the scenes. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, for, for everything that, that I do on the marketing side, uh, you know, Taylor is a, a complete whiz when it comes to automation and helping on the uh, the, the back end side of the uh, of the marketing efforts. And uh, quite frankly, the majority of the the behind the scenes business stuff that you know call it call it administrative stuff that we don't pass along to one of our employees. Uh, you know, Taylor spearheads all that kind of stuff, and uh, right. which is great, which is great for me because I'm a bull in the china shop when it comes to anything administrative. So it, uh, it it really works out well. So, but uh, but yeah, and, and to Taylor's point, you know, I mean, when when you're when you're operating a, a number of businesses that are all kind of uh, being driven by social media, you are constantly interacting with people, and you're interacting with people in a manner that uh, you know, where people behave in in ways where they wouldn't necessarily behave in real life. So we deal with a lot of people that, uh, that, have, uh, that have keyboard muscles, keyboard commandos, that kind of thing. And uh, the one thing that the two of us are both very, very good at is uh, keeping the other one calm when the other one's feeling a little bit heated. So we, uh, we, we balance each other out. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to get all mushy and say he's the yin to my yang or anything like that, but he, he, is my, uh, he, he is my brother from another mother. I love that. I love that. That is so cool. Well, you can tell you guys get along fantastic. I mean, it's, it's like you've known each other literally your entire life. Doesn't sound like you have, uh, but it has been, that's been, you know, that, that just watching you guys and the things that you do and, you know, uh, giving away, a, giving away a, 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 a cruise every year for your group. You know I mean? You just, you guys just do some really cool stuff. So uh, it's just, it's, it's just super and super impressive from a marketing guy, um, more previous sales guy that had to learn marketing. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm super, super impressed and you know I, I'm learning from you guys every day. So thank you for everything you do. Uh, thank you. You got a minute. Okay, so what was it about? Because we could all jump, we could all we could all stay on here for hours and hours and it'd be a blast. But I know we, we everybody's got stuff to do. Uh, what is it about? What was it about this conference? Um, 
that wanted you guys to get involved? Um, you know, how, how'd you hear about it? How'd you notice it? You know, kind of kind of fill us in on what was it about about this? Because you guys are such a great fit for this. Yeah, one thing that intrigued me is everything that Mike and I do. We try to bring the absolute best to the industry. We don't get behind any program or product or software unless we believe that it's the absolute best. Yeah. Uh, and trying to find someone that shares the same passion and mindset that we do is, is sometimes very hard to do. Uh, you know, our, our industry, I still feel, is 20 years behind. So when we found you and 8% Nation and saw what you are putting together, it's, it's forward thinking and it's thinking way bigger than a lot of people think. And, and that's what we try to do every single day is, you know, if, if we aim small, you know, it, it's easy to hit. But when you aim big, you can still miss it and still achieve much greater, you know, a much greater goal than you originally planned. And, and sharing that same vision that you do is what really attracted me to it. Thank you, buddy. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, you know, just to kind of piggyback off that, you know, we're uh, I, I guess you'd say in the grand scheme of things, we're still relatively new to our role within the industry. Uh, you know, just kind of, just kind of like you are, uh, you know, and one of the things that we've kind of found is we've established ourselves and, and grown at the pace that we've grown at and, uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, with all the different conferences that are out there, it seems like, and, uh, I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, normally my gut is, uh, is what I go with. It seems like a lot of these conferences are the same people talking about the same topics just in a different city in front of the exact same uh, audience over and over and over again. And you've got these little tight insular circles within the leadership community of our industry that quite frankly are a little bit tough to break into. You know I mean? You know, you got a lot of alphas, you got a lot of people who look at, uh, look at the new guy or look at the new kids on the block and say, you know, they don't, they don't have the, the credibility to be speaking or I'm sure as heck not sharing the spotlight with, uh, with anyone because you know, that's that, that's just not what I do or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we really liked about what you're putting together here, as opposed to a lot of the different conferences that, uh, that you can find out there, is that it is truly a different approach, a different angle. You've got some different faces and different uh, different names than you see in the typical uh, in the typical circles. And, uh, and and let, let's call a spade a spade, man. You went all in, and uh, I got a real appreciation for anyone who goes all in. I mean, you, uh, you, know, you got a you got a damn football stadium, man. You, you got you got a football stadium. You, you got you got Grant Cardone. You got Ray Lewis. I mean, you 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 went all in uh, at a level that most, I think, myself included. I won't speak for Taylor. Myself included would be probably a little bit too nervous to do. So, uh, you know, we saw what you were putting together and, and all that, you know, the opportunity was a no brainer. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, man. I mean, it's been, what, what's been, what's been really cool is, uh, you know, get, getting you guys involved, um, you know, is, is, is amazing. You know, just your guys' synergy and stuff. So I appreciate the kind words, man. It's, it's been, it's been a ride. I've learned a ton. You know, I've probably made a lot of mistakes, but you know what? Uh, like you got, like, like Taylor said earlier. You think big, you shoot big, you go big, and you know what? Guess what? Uh, you'll end up with twelve hundred agents at a at a NFL football stadium in Nashville. You know, so so so. Yes, yeah, so you guys are going to be speaking live from stage together at Nissan Stadium. The stage is on the field, looking up at the seats. Uh, it's going it's going to be it's going to be incredible. And I'm I'm probably from an industry standpoint, I'm super excited about what you guys are because I know that whatever you do, it's going to be unique. It's going to be creative. It's going to be a different approach. You know, it's going to be the two of you. Um, what will agents learn from what you're going to? I know you don't have everything down specifically yet, but just just from you guys, what what, what can they learn in general, and what do you think they'll learn from from stage? Yeah, in a kind of in a nutshell, without going too deep, is you know we're gonna we're gonna teach kind of the blueprint of how we've grown. The, the largest, most pure entrance group in the industry. Um, almost 22,000 you know, members in the group, every member that's in there is vetted one by one to make sure that they you know, are either an agent, producer, CSR, they hold a spot within the industry that is not on the corporate level, not on the vendor level, um, and it keeps the audience pure. So to teach an agent how to do that within their community so that they can have that audience 
that starts to know them, like them, and trust them. Uh, it, it's not a quick overnight, you know, success, but it's a long-term play that will feed you time and time and time again. And we've spent, I mean, the last three years learning. And like you said, you know, we, we've failed many times along the way. One thing I've, I've always said, especially to our clients, is even if you fall on your face, you're falling forward. So yes. you're constantly moving forward, even if you fail. Um, so to really teach agents how to do and build a community like we have by learning from our mistakes along the way as well. That's you cool. know, one of the, uh, you know, one of the hot and sexy topics in our industry, especially on social media, is the whole idea of advertising on Facebook. And if you know how to do it, you're able to generate those leads very, very inexpensively. Uh, they come in highly, highly targeted and they're exclusive and uh, the whole nine. But uh, one of the areas that I think that a lot of agents really kind of sleep on and uh, neglect is the amount of opportunity that could be located right underneath their nose if they just know how to, to, to source it. And you don't need to be a paid ads wizard. I mean, do our, do our guys know how to generate leads? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've had guys that have generated, you know, not that long ago, we had someone generate 1,700 leads for 2,100 bucks. We've had people generate 1,400 leads for 1,100 bucks. Generally speaking, the leads come in three to eight, three to nine dollars a piece, but you know they, they come in less than that. But the the bottom line is, whenever you're generating leads off of cold traffic, that no like and trust factor is never going to be baked into that prospect. You've got to really you know be on your game. You got to you know you got to call, you got to text, you got to email, you got to voice drop, you got to. Uh, knock on their doors. You got to send the carrier pigeons. You got to do everything under the sun to to really warm them up and get them to interact with you. And the reality of organic social lead gen is you can very easily find three to five people every single day that are going to let you quote out their insurance. That the no like and trust factor has already been getting established for months before that prior conversation, uh, that that current conversation, and. You know, while we, uh, you know, obviously we're huge advocates of generating leads and, uh, you know, we teach it and, and our clients have a lot of success with it. What, uh, what a lot of people ultimately wind up raving about is the fact that not only are they able to generate all these leads, uh, you know, through the, uh, the education that we put out there, but uh, they're able to hop on Facebook every single day and know that they're going to speak to three, four, five people that are going to directly let them quote their insurance. Uh, and, and someone that's allowing you to quote their insurance is significantly different than someone who submitted their information for a future conversation about their insurance. So, um, you know, what we're, what we're going to bring as far as uh, the conference is concerned is we're going to, uh, we're going to really kind of roll back the curtain and show you uh, exactly like Taylor mentioned, how we grew soup, uh, how we went from a group with no intention of monetizing to uh, creating a, a, essentially a business out of thin air, a number of businesses out of thin air, and uh, teach exactly how you, uh, you know everyone that's going to be in the audience, the, uh, the agents that are in attendance, can do the same within their own local communities and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we actually have a, a couple of our uh, of our agents that are going to be in attendance, and, and one of them who actually, who absolutely crushes it. Uh, you know, Troy Johnson will be in attendance, and you know, if we can if we can find him in the audience while we're speaking, maybe we'll uh, we'll we'll point them out or whatever. But uh, you know, when when you're when you're organically uh, mining social media for opportunity, those opportunities come to you at that referral quality, that lay down quality that you're hoping for that you seldom get. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, it's going to be a, a slightly different look at the idea of lead gen in uh, in a traditional sense. Yeah, because that's what that's immediately what people think is okay. I've, you know, with leads, well, I need I don't need leads, but I don't have any. You know, maybe I don't have any money. You know, and so what's really cool about what you guys do and what you teach in Soup and Career Agent Concepts and other things that you do is how to. And again, you reference what you're going to talk about stage. Every insurance agent. It's going to take away, I'm not going to give it away right now, but they're going to take away one specific nugget, at least one that I know of. And I don't, I don't even know everything that you're going to be speaking on, but I already know one specific nugget that the two of you will be delivering from stage at Nissan Stadium that will change an agent's business forever. And, yeah. and 
it's incredible. So I'm excited for you guys to be able to give that value from stage at Nissan Stadium from there. So, so tell agents, uh, if they're on the fence, in your estimation, what is it about this type of event, this type of conference, and why should agents, other than the fact that they get to meet the two of you and hang out, you know, why should agents attend? I, I, I'm, I'm a gambling man. You put me in Vegas, I'll sit at the tables all day. And I, I would push the chips all in that this will be the most value-packed conference for the industry that has ever come about. And that's I say that with confidence. The, the lineup of speakers, the, the program that you've put together, if you're on the fence for the, the price of this conference, it's a drop in the bucket for the value that you will walk away and the nuggets of gold that you'll take from it, hands down. That was so much more prolific than anything I had. I was going to say, if you're on the fence, I'll let you stroke my beard. <laughs> and, 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 if, and if that's a turnoff, then, then I'll let you not stroke my beard. That's <laughs> where I was going to go with that. But uh, in, in all seriousness, uh, in, in, in all seriousness, uh, I, I would agree this is uh, a lineup that is just front to back worth, uh, worth catching. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to walk away with highly, uh, highly productive and easy to implement strategies, not just from us, but from everyone that's going to be up there on stage. Um, and it's going to, it's going to be the type of thing where, you know, you're going to be able to turn around, get back to your, uh, get back to your office and implement. And uh, I don't, I don't know the in-depth uh, topics that everyone is speaking on or, or, or whatnot, but I can tell you right now that if you are an agent who is planning on being in this industry for the long term, but you are new and you are financially struggling and you're trying to figure out how to market effectively without that budget, if you get to this conference, you will walk away with strategies that you will be able to implement immediately that will cost you and your agency literally nothing. Wow. My gosh. So, um, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say literally nothing. It will cost you the price of admission to, to the conference. But as far as an ongoing marketing strategy, uh, we are going to sow the seeds for you to uh, be able to harvest from this point forward until you're, in, until you're ready to retire. Dude, I love that. Thank you both. I, 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 that, was, that, was, that wasn't planned. That wasn't scripted. I'm telling you what. Taylor about had me in freaking tears or about jumping up and down, ready to tackle Ray Lewis, man. That was strong. <laughs> I do got to work. I, I want to say it live on stage. There we go. There I, may be, I may be the only guy on stage big enough to actually tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're going to have to set that up there. We're gonna do <laughs> I've, I've noticed one thing today. I've at least got to work on my beard, right? <laughs> <laughs> one thing, man, one thing, and it's been a, a curse and a blessing is – Mike and I, since the very beginning, since we were member one and, and member two in Insurance Soup, is we've stayed true to who we are. Uh, I mean, we're, we're real. We don't change. Um, it's pushed a lot of people away, but it's attracted a lot and built a very loyal following. And that's, that's one of the things we're going to talk about is you don't have to try to please everyone. You know, be, be yourself, be real, raw, and relevant, and, you know, your audience will come to you. So, wow. When, uh, when, when you're constantly blowing in the wind and trying to change who you are to satisfy the people that you're talking to or whatever, you're essentially a cone of vanilla, vanilla ice cream. Every, everyone's going to like you. No one's going to love you. And very few people are going to go into the store and, uh, with 31 flavors and pick you. So That's good. That's good. You heard it here first. Real, raw, and relevant. I love that, dude. And you know what? That's, that's what learning you, getting to know you guys over the short amount of time we have, I'm telling you what. There isn't two more honest, transparent, ethical, deep down, actual, genuine, good dudes than these dudes. I mean, it's I've been so overly impressed. I'm serious. It's been incredible. Appreciate so, that, man. Yeah, you got it. You got it. All right. Uh, any final words, gents, before we wrap this thing up? If you haven't bought your ticket, you got to do so. You got to. Come on, get man. Yeah, and uh, you know if you're if you're on the sidelines and trying to figure out how to, you know, put the, uh, you know, put the scratch together to come or whatever. Uh, you know, Cody's put together a number of uh, great opportunities. Don't just, you know, look, 
uh, I, I, we, in, in our private Facebook group last night, we had uh, one of the gals that really wanted to go saying that she couldn't find a hotel for less than two eighty nine a night. Uh, you know, you've got you've got some deals on uh, on your website right now for eight percent nation. Uh, you know, there there are promo codes out there right now. Soup uh, Soup will get you a discount on uh, on a ticket. I know you've got uh, some other people out there that have got their own little uh, their own little deals right now for uh, for the conference. So there there are ways for you to get there right now at a very very affordable price. And uh, and and heck, I mean, if, if you're struggling to find uh, an affordable place to stay or anything like that, uh, check out Airbnb. Uh, I was on there a little bit earlier today trying to find some of our agents uh, a place to stay, and uh, you can find places for less than a hundred bucks a night. You know, I mean, uh, th there's really no excuse to not be there uh, if your interest is peaked. So, you know, there's 101 ways to do it. Let's just get it done and let's, uh, you know, let's let's have some fun at this conference. I love it, guys, I love it. Thank you so much. Hey, if, if, if you want to meet the insurance soup, the faces behind the names, Michael McCork and Taylor Dobby, you gotta be at 8% Nation, Nissan Stadium in Nashville, 22 days, 11 hours is counting down every single second. Gentlemen, thank you for being on and looking forward to seeing you at 8% Nation Insurance Wealth Conference. It's going to be a blast. Looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you being on very much. Thank you.